this video, we are going to be talking about and going over the fundamentals and basics of two very popular and highly requested concepts in maths in the comment sections of these videos and also in my Discord server. And that is none other than differentiation and integration, which are two really important aspects in mathematics and other areas to learn about and are really, really useful in the real world. In fact, you may have even heard of these terms outside of maths. You may just know it as, you know, differentiating between things or integrating things into something and you want to know what it means. Well, in tonight's video, we're going to be covering the very basics of what they mean, how they can be used, how they are useful and even go over some very simple problems to help you relax, help you sleep, and of course, stay a little bit educated at the same time. And so I really hope you all do enjoy tonight's video. Really quickly, before we get into it, I want to quickly let you all know that I'm in the process of working on a very fun video at the moment in which I'm asking for your math questions. That's right, I'm going to be doing a video in which I go over some problems, whether they be exam-style problems, homework or textbook-style problems to do with any areas of maths submitted by you. So if you have a question that you've seen that you'd like to see me try solve in a video, be sure to submit it to my email or send me a picture in my Discord server with the information on screen now or take a look at the instructions in the description down below. Anyways, without further ado, if you do enjoy tonight's video, be sure to leave it a big thumbs up and let me know down below if you'd like to see more videos like this. So, let's get started. Now, before I do start, I think it's really important that I let you all know that this video is intended to be very simplistic and very basic as an introductory explanation. And it won't be a full, in-depth analysis of all the aspects to differentiation and integration as these are possibly two of the biggest aspects in maths. There are so many related and um, branches from each of these things that it would take me days to explain everything to you all. So if you would like to see more in-depth analysis on some differentiation methods or integration methods, let me know in the comments. But I believe I have actually done a video on recently that has a lot of information to do with it so check that out with the link in the description anyways let's get started so let's look at the two fundamental aspects the calculus which are called differentiation they might sound very intimidating at first, but trust me, they're not so bad. These terms are actually extremely useful in all areas of maths, not just calculus, but also in other areas, such as science and biology, for example, or engineering mechanics, economics and finance, 
and even to be able to model and solve problems, understand motion and physics and dynamics, and predict financial models. So as you can imagine, super useful, super, super helpful. But today we are going to try to understand what these terms mean, how to solve basic problems using their rules, and showing how they can be used in real life scenarios. So let's get started with some differentiation. Now I must note that these are two similar but different things. And we're going to start by talking about differentiation. So what is differentiation? Let's begin with what does it mean, the basic definition. Differentiation is the process of finding the rate at which a quantity changes. It is the rate of change of a quantity. Take a quantity, for example, such as the volume of a cup. If you were to increase the volume, the quantity of the liquid inside is changing, maybe increasing or decreasing. The, vo the quantity in this case would be the volume, and the rate of change would be how much liquid is being gained or lost from the cup. Now, if we are given a function f of x, let's say it's a curve, for example, that's probably the most common use of f of x. Now, it also may be a curve for the motion of an object, a biological model, or any kind of aspect, we can use the basic rule of differentiation to apply to this curve. If, and this rule is, if f of x equals x to some power n, then f prime that's what this means, prime, sometimes we call it dash, is equal to n x to the power of n minus 1. Now that sounds a bit confusing, but when you break it down, it's not so bad. Let's ignore the f of x and see what's changing between x to the n and n x to the n minus 1. Well, first, the biggest difference is that there's this n in front of the x. So what have we done there? Well, we have taken this n and brought it down to the front and multiplied it by the x. That's the first thing. The second thing we've done is we have subtracted 1 from n. So the process of differentiating is taking a term of a function, bringing the power down to the front, and subtracting 1 from the old power, no matter what the value of n is. Now this thing here, f dash to x, f prime of x, is called the derivative derivative of f of x. Now with this uh, sort of rule, there is other notation, which is, for example, if y is equal to f of x, where y is some sort of function, let's say y is equal to x cubed, then this time instead of writing f prime of x, we would write this thing here, which is dy divided by dx, which simply means to differentiate. 
differentiate, that's what this D means, differentiate Y, the function Y, with respect to X. It's always with respect to X. We're not differentiating to something else in this case. Now we divide it because it's obviously the rate of change. Now, often we use differentiation to calculate the gradient. That's probably one of the most uh, common uses of differentiation, I'd say, is to find the gradient of a graph at certain points by using the uh, tangent to the curve at that point. Now this can be proved using what is called differentiation from first principles. And this is how we get this thing here. This is what it means to differentiation, the basic meaning of it. Now we're not going to cover that in tonight's video because it involves a little bit of understanding of what's called limits. But we'll talk about that maybe in another video. So we're going to start off by doing some basic examples to try and get a good grasp of how to differentiate. So let's grab our pen and give this a go. Our first question says, given f of x equals x to the 4, find f prime of x, which is, remember, the derivative. So let's go back up and let's actually grab our rule. smaller and just set it to the side so we can refer to it. So let's start. Let's put a little squiggly line underneath. So part A. So in this case our function in terms of x is x to the 4. So let's do this very slowly. We want to find f prime of x. So let's look at our formula. If f of x equals x to some power n, which we have, then f prime x equals, let's just apply everything here, so what's n? n is 4. Then we put in our x, whoops, we put in our x, and then we do n minus 1, so n was 4. Let's just write that to the side, n is 4. So 4 minus 1 is 3. You might think, is that it? Yes, that is literally it. We have differentiated x to the power 4. Once again, you can see we brought the power down to the front, and we subtracted 1 from the power. So with that being said, let's try a couple more complex ones here, part B. Complex is probably not the right word to use. <laughs> uh, it says differentiate f of x equals x to the minus 3 with respect to x. Okay, so this time it's a little bit more tricky because x has a negative power. It's still very similar though. f prime x, we bring the power down to the front keep x the same. Now what is minus 3 minus 1? It's just minus 4, right? Now we could leave it there. That is technically correct. We could leave it there. But some uh, markers may ask you to write this in its simplest form. Now typically in maths we don't write negative powers. Anything to the negative power is equal to whoops, 1 divided by it to the positive power. So here, x to the negative 4 is 1 over x to the 4, but we're multiplying it by minus 3. So it would be minus 3 divided by x to the 4. And for the final 
1 here in the examples. If y is equal to x to the power of 1 divided by 3 1 third, find dy by dx. So remember we said <coughs> that dy dx simply just means to differentiate. So instead of writing f prime, we're going to write dy dx. This time, let's see, we have x to the third. Okay, so we bring the power to the front, so we have one third x. But this time we're subtracting one from a third. Now I'm going to take this out to the side. One third subtract one. If you've done work with basic fractions, this might be a little easier to do. But to do this, we need a common denominator. So let's make it three. Now, what would the common denominator here be? It would be three. Three over three is one. So that's going to equal negative two thirds. Now, remember what I said, we can take this one step further by actually changing this to a positive power. Sometimes you don't have to, but we're going to do it. And in this case, it's going to be a third times 1 over x to the 2 thirds positive. And then you can multiply it together to get 1 over 3x to the two-thirds. Now you actually could take this one step further by getting rid of the fractional power, but we're going to keep it as a fractional power. So those are some basic examples of differentiation. Now before we move on to integration, I thought I would tell you why this is useful. So differentiation can be extremely useful in things such as motion, for finding the velocity or the acceleration of an object. For example, if x in terms of t is the position of an object at time t, then the velocity, and this is our formula, our rules, the velocity at time t is the derivative of the position with respect to time. So if we think about this as x is the position of an object, let's take a look at my fist. My fist is here, and then it moves to here. It is the rate of change, the velocity. The velocity is the movement. The rate of change is the velocity of the position how it's changed. So it's, that's the, the definition of that in literal terms. And then we have the acceleration in terms of t is the rate of change of the velocity with respect to t. So if my fist was to slowly get faster and faster as it moved, it would be how the, the movement of it is increasing or decreasing, how it is changing, and that's why when we go back to our basic definition, it's all about the rate of change. Now I've written this thing off to the side, you don't really have to worry about this too much, but that simply means it's the second derivative of the position. So if you have the position, you differentiate it, and differentiate it again. Now it can also be useful for doing things in math, such as finding the stationary points of a curve. If you don't know what this is, don't worry too much. But it basically means to find where, if we have some sort of curve, um, like this. It basically means, I mean that's a sine curve, but it basically means to find the points at which the curve turns or where the tangent to the curve is going to be zero. And that's where I have this definition here, which is where the tangent at the stationary point is zero. 
Thus, the derivative must be zero for a curve of equation f of x. So we're going to take a look at some further examples here to help you get a bit of a more um, extensive grasp of differentiation. So, parts a, a curve is defined by f of x equals 3x cubed minus 2x squared plus 5x. Find the derivative f prime x. Now this time, I'm not going to bring down our formula. We're going to try and do it ourselves without looking, because differentiation is something that you should be able to um, know what to do off by heart. Usually in exams you won't get a um, sort of formula for differentiation unless it's more complex differentiation. So let's try this. Let's write down f of x, which is, what is it, 3x cubed. This time is a bit different because we've got what have we got? Well, this time we have coefficients in front of our x. So let's think about this. With each term, we're going to do it each one at a time. So let's start with the 3x cubed. What do we do? Well, we bring the power down to the front. What are we actually doing when we bring the power down to the front? We are multiplying it by the x. So we're going to bring this 3 down and have 3x, but we're going to multiply it by the 3 that's already there. So 3 times 3 is 9. So that's what's happened here. Take away 1 from 3 is 2. Now we move on to the next term. Now when you differentiate, you just work through each term as you go. Unless it's a fraction, that's when things get a little different. So minus 2, we're going to bring the 2 down to the front, multiply it by the minus 2, we're going to get minus 4x. Now 2 minus 1 is just 1, usually we don't write x to the 1, we just leave it as x. Plus, now here we have a power of 1 secretly, but that just disappears. So when we have plus coefficient x, you just get rid of the x and keep it as a constant, as 5. And this is because if we take a look at 5x, it's technically 5x to the 1. If we bring the 1 down to the front, we're going to do 1 times 5x, and then 1 take away 1 is 0. So that is 1 times 5 is 5x to the 0. Well, anything to the power of 0 is 1. So it'll be 5 times 1, which is 5. So that's how it's just 5. So that's our first question done. Question 2. Okay, this one looks a bit more tricky. A ball is thrown so that its position x after t seconds is given by s of t is equal to 12t minus 5t squared. Uh, this is actually incorrect notation. Sorry, I copied this from a, a textbook. x of t is equal to 12t minus 5t squared. Find its velocity after 2 seconds. Okay, so if we recall from earlier, we said that the velocity in terms of t is the derivative of x with respect to t. So sometimes you're not always going to be doing it with respect to x. Here we've always been doing with respect to t. This time we have the x of t is equal to 12t minus 5t squared. And if we remember from earlier, vt is equal to x dash t, which is the same as just saying dx by dt. 
so let's do that so 12t just deriv derivative of that is going to be just 12 in respect to t minus 5 times 2 is minus 10 t and then subtract 1 is just going to be t to the power of 1 which is t so there we go but we're not done there because the question says find its velocity after 2 seconds this is just a formula for the velocity at a given point or a given time we want it after 2 seconds so what we must do is therefore find v of 2 so v of 2 is going to be 12 minus 10 times 2 anywhere you see a t you substitute in 2 so this is going to be 12 minus 20 which is going to be minus 8 now this actually in, in, interpreting this actually means that the speed is getting slower so it means that or the velocity is getting slower so it basically means that it's still moving but it's getting slower and slower as it moves it could be that it's moving in the opposite direction as well depending on how you look at this so going on to our final uh, further example here this one's definitely a bit more tricky and if you have not looked at stationary points yet do not worry just try to understand the differentiating aspect of this question now this question says to find the stationary points to the curve y is equal to x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x minus 4 now because I'm lazy I'm going to copy this and put it down here Now let's go up and look about what we said about stationary points. So we say that differentiation can also be useful for finding the stationary points of a curve as the gradient of the tangent at a stationary point is zero. Thus, the derivative is equal to zero for a curve of equation f of x. Now we have the equation of our curve and if we look at what we said from earlier we said that stationary points we're just going to call them SPs they occur when now instead of saying f of x I'm going to say dy by dx just because in the question we've used y but remember they mean the same thing and it's when it's equal to zero so, let's take our curve and find dy by dx. Now, technically, we know that it's going to be equal to zero at the end. So, let's do this. Well, x cubed is going to go to 3x. We should be able to do this a bit faster now. Minus 6x squared is going to be minus 12x. Subtract 1 to the power plus 9x is going to go to plus 9 now minus 4 is just a constant so it's going to go to 0 and if you want to look at y it's because this is technically minus 4x to the 0 when you bring the power down to the front you're just going to do minus 4 times 0 which is 0 and then 0 times anything is going to give you 0 So, this is our derivative. Now, because the stationary points occur when this is equal to zero, we can say, whoops, <laughs> that this is equal to zero. So, we have the 3x minus 12x plus 9 is equal to zero. So, what can we do from this? We need to find the 
stationary points, the coordinates of them. Well, if you remember from factorizing, if we have this, oh sorry, this should be squared, I apologize greatly. If you remember from factorizing, if we have a quadratic like so, we can find values for x by factorizing it. So let's factorize it. So if you just want to understand differentiation, this is probably the point at which you would stop. But if you want to understand its aspect in maths, this is where it gets important. So to factorize this, we can take out a factor of 3. And now we can factorize this little middle portion. There we go. So this tells us that either x is equal to 3 or x is equal to 1, well it could be both. So we'll just say x is equal to 3 and x is equal to 1. So we have two stationary points at the points 3 and 1. But that's not enough, we need the coordinates of them. So if we have the x coordinates of a point, how can we work out the y coordinates? Well, if you recall, back at the start of the question, we have a formula for y, which is the y-coordinate in terms of x. So we can say that y is equal for the first one for 3. 3 cubed minus 6 times 3 squared plus 9 times 3 minus 4. Now, sadly, I don't have a calculator, so I'll have to do this manually. Uh, that's 54 plus 27 minus 4. So they're going to cancel out because that's 54. So that's going to be minus 4. And then y for 1 is going to be 1 cubed minus 6 times 1 squared plus 9 times 1 minus 4. Which is going to be 1 minus 6 plus 9 minus 4 which is going to be minus 5, uh, it's, it's just going to be 0. So therefore, our stationary points are, the first one is 3, and when it's 3, it's going to be minus 4, and then 1, and when it's 1, our y is 0. So that is our final question on differentiation, showing how it can be useful for finding things such as stationary points to a curve. And this is where we're going to move on to the next part of the video, which is integration. Now, integration is the process of finding the total accumulation of a quantity over an interval. Now that might sound really confusing, but a nice easier way of understanding it is that this integration is basically the opposite of differentiation. What do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look at the basic rule of integration. If we have something like x to the power n, if we integrate it with respect to x, we add 1 to the power and divide by n plus 1, which is the new power. We also add c. So what does this mean? Well, this fancy looking symbol here just means we're integrating. So if we have something such as x cubed and we want to integrate it, to say integrating. Remember with differentiation we use symbols like these and like these. For integration we use this funky looking, looks like an S kind of, doesn't it? Like a fancy S on its side. <laughs> it's kind of fun to draw actually. So that basically means we're integrating. dx, remember from earlier, means with respect to x. Now the 
letter C on the end is the constant of integration. We'll talk about why we have this early uh, later on. So let's do some basic examples to show you how this works. Now let's take uh, whoops. Let's take this formula, this rule, so we can use it to help us. And we'll start off nice and basic. So, part A, find the integral of x to the power of 5 with respect to x. Okay, so, x to the power of 5 with respect to x. So, what do we do? Let's take a look. We're going to have a fraction, so let's write a fraction. So we start by taking x and raising it to the power of n plus 1. What's n? n is 5. So 5 plus 1 is, well, 6. Then we divide by n plus 1. and we said is 5. So n plus 1 is 6. So we divide by 6. Wow, look at that. How easy was that? Now, how is this the opposite of differentiating? Well, this time, instead of subtracting from the power, remember we subtracted 1 from the power. This time we've added 1 to the power, so that's, you know, the opposite. And this time we have divided by the new power. Remember, with differentiating, we multiplied by the old power. For example, x to the n, we started by multiplying by the old power and then subtracting 1. Different uh, integration, we add 1 to the power first and then divide by the new power. So that's how it's the opposite. So, I want to also let you guys know that me personally, I like to write this as 1 over 6, x to the 6, it's the same thing, it's the same thing, but a lot of the time I might write this, so if you see me write this, I'm sorry, but it, it means the same thing, it's just different way mathematicians write things. For part b, we have if f of x is equal to 2x plus x cubed, find the integral with respect to x. Now, actually, I've made a mistake. Do you know what the mistake is? Let me go back up and show you everything. Can you spot it? Yes, I forgot my plus c. Now, this is something that is very important in integrating, and a lot of people forget it. So I need to remember to add c to whatever I get to my answers. And I know you're probably thinking, what? Add a c? That's so random. Well, if you think about differentiating, because this is the opposite of it, let's say we add x squared plus 5. If we differentiate this, we're going to get 2x plus 0. So just 2x is going to be our answer. If I told you to reverse this and take 2x and integrate it, well, you would add 1 to the power first, so you'd get 2x squared. Then you'd divide by the new power, so you'd divide by 2, which just gives you x squared because the 2s are going to cancel out. But oh look, this is not the same as this. x squared is not the same as x squared plus 5. We need that plus 5. So where does it come from? Well, because we don't know what it is, we just call it c. c could be 5, it could be minus 3, it could, could be 1, it could be a half, it could be anything. But because we don't know, we just write c. <coughs> so, that's why it's very important to remember it. So let's give this next question a go and remember our plus c. 
So this time it's 2x plus x cubed. So we want to find the integral of f of x with respect to x. Okay, so like differentiating, we just go by uh, each term. So we are going to be finding the integral of 2x plus x cubed with respect to x. Sometimes mathematicians will put brackets around that to let you know that it's one whole thing. So, let's do this. So 2x, well, I used that as an example earlier. We add 1 to the power, so we're going to get 2x plus 1 is 2, divide by the new power, which is 2, and then x cubed, add 1 to the power, is 4, divide by the new power is 4, and then don't forget the plus c. But we can simplify this because 2 over 2 is just 1, so we're going to get x squared. And I'm also just going to write this as 1 quarter x to the 4, like I said I like to do. Plus c. So let's go on to our final basic example. Let me know in the comments, by the way, what do you think is more tricky, integrating or differentiating? Now I must also let you know that whilst the uh, when the process of differentiating is to define the derivative, similarly the process of integrating is to find the integral. So this thing here is the integral of f of x. So part c, find the integral of x to the power of 5 divided by 4 dx. Okay, let's try and do this without looking now. So, add 1 to the power first. Right, well, let's do this off to the side. 5 to the 4 plus 1 is going to be 5 to the 4, or sorry, 5 over 4 plus 4 over 4, which is 9 over 4. So, it's going to equal x to the 9 over 4, but we want to divide by the new power. So we're going to divide by 9 over 4. Now that looks really disgusting, doesn't it? So we're going to simplify it a bit. If you remember, if you divide by a fraction, that is the same as multiplying by the inverse of the fraction. So it's going to be 4 over 9 multiplied by x to the 9 over 4 plus c. Okay, so that's some basic questions done there. Let's take a little bit more of a read here. A few more things to talk about. So like I said, we must remember, very important everybody, you must remember your plus c. And this is when working with indefinite integrals. We'll talk about definite integrals in a sec. You must always remember to do your plus c. Now, once you've done an integration question, you can always check if you're correct. You can check if you did it right by using the process that the opposite of differentiating is integrating. You can see by the rules shown there. So, for example, if you had a third x cubed plus c, if you differentiate that, you're going to get x squared. Whereas if you integrate that, you're going to get 1 over 3 x cubed plus c. And you can try this out for yourself. Now, similar to, or similarly to differentiating, integrating can be used in very, very many ways in maths. The main one is used to find what's called definite integrals, or extended to definite integration. Now, definite integration is when you are given these little numbers at the top and bottom of this fancy looking S, the integration symbol. Now, what this means is if you see something that looks like this, where you have the uh, integral symbol and you have values at the top and bottom and you have something that you're integrating with respect to x, it means to find the integral and then 
find the integral with respect or the integral substituting in B subtract the integral substituting in A so this rule looks really complex but I've written below what it means to do so A and B are called the limits of the integral or the definite integral capital F of X is the integral of F of X and then f of b minus f of a is the substitution of the limits as x into the integral. So if we add something, for example, x cubed, and we want to find the integral with a and b, let's not use numbers yet. As you can see with our formula here, capital F of x is the integral of x cubed. So it would be 1 over 4x to the 4. We put these little square brackets around it to say that we're doing the definite integral. And then we use a and b at the sides like this. Then we substitute in b and a and subtract them from each other. So substituting in b, we're going to get 1 over 4b to the 4 minus 1 over 4 a to the 4, just like so, it's not so bad. The only trick with this one is, with definite integration, you don't add C. That's the only thing to note. With definite integration, you don't add C. So, this can be very useful for finding things like areas under curves, um, volumes of revolution and many more things but we'll not talk about that in this video I think I cover it in my integration video that I did on the channel which again will be linked below so check that out alrighty so we're gonna do some further examples and then wrap things up there so we have two further examples and they're both to do with definite integration which is the more complex side of integration. I mean, there are more things in integration, a lot, lot more. But as a basic introduction, this is a very good point to stop. So let's do this here. So the first question, part A, says to find the definite integral with the limits of 1 and 3 of 5x squared. Okay, now I'm going to bring down our formula to show you how this formula works. Because a lot of you might have found that just like a bit of jargon, but it's good if I um, sort of explain to you, oh gosh, how it works. So let's use this to do that question. Let's do it straight by the formula. Okay, so we've got these square brackets. What goes in them? Well, we said that capital F of X is the integral of F of X. F of X in our case is this thing here. 5X squared, so we have F of X is 5X squared, so capital F of X. Remember, we increase the power by 1. That's going to be x cubed. And we divide by the new power. So divide by 3. Okay. Now we close the square brackets. Our limits at the end, a and b, are 1 and 3. And now we substitute in these values of b and a. Now usually the higher number will be the one on top. Usually, not always. So let's substitute in b first. So 5 over 3. x is going to be 3 cubed. And we're going to subtract when we put 1 in. So 5 over 3. 1 cubed. And all that's left to do is solve this. Remember, you don't. Or I, sh I, I don't know what symbol to even use here. You, you don't. <laughs> plus C. I'll just write don't plus C. 
see because it's definite integration. So, 5 over 3 times 3 cubed, well, 3 cubed is 27. So it's going to be 5 times 27 divided by 3 minus 5 over 3 times 1 cubed. Well, 1 cubed is just 1. So it's subtract 5 over 3. I'm going to make sure I've noted this question down correctly. I have. Now, 5 times 27 is going to be 135. The quick way I did that is timesing it by 10 is 270, then divided by 2. Then that's that divided by 3. Subtract 5 over 3, which is going to be 130 over 3. Does that simplify? I don't think so. So, yeah, we'll leave it like that. Part B, let's uh, copy and paste our question. So we're finding the definite integral from 0 to 2 of x cubed plus 3x squared. Okay, great. So, if we remember, we start by... Oh, did I write dx in the question? I did, I just didn't copy it. We start by integrating the thing that we're integrating. So, x cubed is x to the 4 divided by 4. 3x squared. Well, I can already see that when we do that, we're going to get x cubed divided by 3 times 3, and 3 over 3 is just 1. So it's just going to be plus x cubed. Put the brackets around it, put our limits 0 and 2, and now we substitute those values in. So 2 to the 4 divided by 4. Now, because there's two parts to this, I'm going to add some brackets. Plus 2 cubed. So that's the first part. Then we subtract when we put 0 in. Now I can actually see... I'm going to write all out. But 0 to the 4. Plus 0 cubed. This whole thing here is just going to actually equal 0. So we're going to just subtract 0 anyway, so we can kind of just ignore that and only look at this first part. 2 to the 4 is 16. 16 divided by 4 is 4. Plus 2 to the 3 is 8. So 4 plus 8 is 12. And that is going to be our final answer for the final question. So, I know it has been a little bit longer than I expected this video to be, considering it is a brief introduction to integration and differentiating. But, I will pop this entire document in the description down below, in case you want to have a little read and learn more about it in your own time. But I really hope that you guys have enjoyed. If you have any questions about the things we've talked about tonight, let me know in the comments. And like I said, there are so many branches from differentiating and integrating, so if you have parts of those that you'd like to see, no pun intended, if you know what integration by parts is, uh, if you have parts to do with those things, let me know in the comments, and maybe I'll cover that in another video. Anyways, thanks for watching everybody.